I'm Marian Luntz from the Museum Sound Department. I am very proud that you are all here for the opening program in the 15th season of our Movies Houstonians Love series. It is a true privilege to invite notables from throughout our greater community uh, to share their love of movies, to choose a favorite movie and present it and then enjoy the unparalleled experience of watching it with an audience on the big screen here as we are about to do with Dr. Bud Frazier's movie Threshold. Uh, Dr. Thra Frazier, in just a moment, will say a few words about how this was the only movie he wanted to show when we invited him to do Movies Custodians Love. But I want to tell you about a very special uh, aspect of tonight's screening. After the movie, please stay. We will have a conversation on stage with not just Dr. Bud Frazier, but his compatriot, Dr. Billy Cohn, and also the film's director, Richard Pierce, and the film's producer, Michael Burns. Uh, Richard and Michael have come to town, and they will tell you and share their excitement in the fact that Threshold has been rediscovered uh, by Dr. Frazier, by us, and for all of you. Now for you to please welcome Dr. Bud Frazier, who is going to speak a bit about his movie choice, Threshold. Please welcome the legendary Dr. Bud Frazier. Thank you very much. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I, this is uh, a movie that was, it was a Canadian movie, and uh, it was very well received up there, but I don't even know if it was ever shown in the movies here. Uh, the director says it was, but I never saw it. Because Donald Sutherland, I remember him coming down in the late 70s, early 80s, and he looked like Dr. Cooley. He was about the same height, and he hung around, very nice, very pleasant. He did a commendable job, and he won sort of acting award in, in uh, Canada for this movie. I, when I started to Baylor in 1963, uh, I was a history English major, and I just, uh, I, I'd read a lot of Kafka and, and, uh, and, and Chekhov, particularly, and I decided I'd go to medical school. You know, I had no particular interest in science, but uh, uh, so I was fortunate enough to be uh, uh, accepted in Houston at, to Baylor, and the only reason I wanted to go there because my girlfriend and current wife was from Houston. That was my uh, criteria. And uh, we had to do a research paper the, uh, every year at Baylor. It was one of the best things that Dr. Bakey instilled in. But if you, we started in September, so we had to have an answer of what we were gonna do by the 1st of November. And I remember uh, standing by the elevators in the Jewish uh, research building and a friend of mine, a fraternity brother came up. It was October the 30th. We had to have our title in by November the 1st. And he was a fraternity brother of mine. He was a real gunner. He was always ahead of the curve and he knew me. And it, you know, I was famous for, you know, studying at the last minute. But he came up and he said, uh, Bud, what, what's your research program? And I said, you know, I hadn't thought about it. I've got another day. <laughs> and, and he said, I knew you wouldn't have done anything. I've already signed you up. We're going to do this research in surgery. And I can't do it all. i got to have someone to help me. So that's how I got into surgery. And he, uh, he, it turned out he had an intentional tremor. And I started working with Domingo Leota and Dr. DeBakey, who were working on the first artificial heart. Now, Dr. DeBakey, I remember him saying clearly that by 1980, there'd be 100,000 Americans with artificial hearts. It seems so simple, it's just a pump. But it turned out, like a lot of things in life, a little tougher than we thought. And uh, I worked on the postal pumps as my research effort all through uh, my uh, training years. And, and after that, when I went with Dr. Cooley in his, uh, his lab, and the first pulsatile pump to be approved by the FDA was the one that I developed. And, uh, but by the early 80s, it became obvious to me, you know, your heart beats 100,000 times every 24 hours if you do nothing. So we had to have a membrane that would flex that many times. And the membranes usually wore out after 18 months to 24 months. So I started working on continuous flow pumps. And now they're the only pumps made for left ventricular assist devices. There have been over 60,000 of them implanted. 
I was in Kazakhstan not long ago, and there was a young girl there that uh, they had done. Of course, she didn't know who I was from Adam, but it was uh, it saved her life, and it was uh, sort of gratifying to see people. There are over 500 hospitals putting in this bunch, but there's no total heart. We do, we don't have a total heart replacement. And uh, Billy Cohn came in 2005 to work with me, and. Uh, he said, you know, I've seen something like this. I said, what? What are you talking about? He said, yeah, I saw it on TV one time. It's a movie about a continuous flow of total artificial heart, which is what we were working on. And this was 2005. I said, ah, I don't believe it. <laughs> and uh, and, and I, I knew nothing about it. I'd never seen it. And uh, so Billy found it, and we saw it. And it's a, it's a very engaging movie. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy it tonight. <laughs> 